الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمنا من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز فوزا عظيما قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله امواتا بل احياء بل احياء عند ربهم يرزقون صلوا على محمد وال محمد Another salawat for the love of the Ahlul Bayt A third salawat for the love of Aba Abdullah Al Hussein. Once again, the season of mourning has approached us. The month of Muharram has come with a start of a new year. Starting the new year reminding us of the tragedies that fell upon the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, upon Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. And once again, we see that everyone has put their lives on hold so that they can come out and shed a few tears for Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. So that they can give their condolences to Fatima al Zahra, to Rasulullah, to Amir al Mu'mineen. This is the miracle of the Ahlul Bayt. Every year we gather and we remember all over the world. There are thousands of majalis all over the world. In every city, you will find a majlis for Aba Abdullah al Hussein. In almost every language, you will find a majlis for Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Now, someone might say, What's the big deal? It was a battle that lasted only a few hours. Imam al Hussein and a handful of men, less than a hundred, they were all killed on the day of Ashura, on the 10th of Muharram, year 61 after Hijrah, in a battle that did not last more than a few hours. What's the big deal? We've seen revolutions. We've seen wars. We've seen battles and wars that have taken decades and many years and many casualties and many people displaced and many people killed. 
What's the big deal? What's the significance about the battle of Hussein that you Shias, you followers of Ahl al-Bayt, you gather every year, you cry for, and you remember him. Hussein, he died, just like everyone dies, and we say, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un, and we don't continue crying for people that die. But for Aba Abdullah and Hussein, we continue crying. Our family members, sometimes the closest people to us, if they leave this life, we remember them one year, two years, three years. Then eventually we forget. But for Aba Abdullah and Hussein, every year we continue remembering Imam al Hussein. Year after year, more people cry for Aba Abdullah al Hussein. More people walk to the shrine of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. More people commemorate the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Now someone might ask, what's the secret? What's the secret of the victory of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam? What did Aba Abdullah do that other revolutions have not done? What did he do that other revolutionaries, other rebellions, they did not do? What made his revolution a success and what made the other revolutions be forgotten? There's a few answers for this. Mm -hmm. And these nights when we gather to commemorate Aba Abdullah, this is what we will answer. What made Imam al Hussein successful so that we can follow on the path of Aba Abdullah? The first thing that made Imam al Hussein alayhi salam successful is that everything that he did was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ The one who dies and gives his blood for the sake of Allah, do not consider this person a dead person. Consider this person a living person. And Imam al Hussein is alive. And the followers of Imam al Hussein are alive. Imam al Hussein was born on the day of Ashura. This is why we remember Aba Abdullah. Some people, they come and they try to play with the intentions of Imam al Hussein. They say Imam al Hussein, he fought a war for the sake of power. Just like we see leaders today, they go and they, they do rebellions. They stand against the leaders of their time so that they can take power. Is this really what Imam al Hussein wanted? Was Imam al Hussein an Imam who wanted power? He was 57 years old, 58 years old, the day he was killed. He knew he wasn't going to live long. You think he was going to risk his life and the life of his family for the sake of a few years, a few months of ruling? Is this the Ahl al-Bayt that we know? No. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he made his agenda very clear before he embarked on his journey to Karbala. To Kufa. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he says, Inni lam akhruj ashiran wala batiran wala mufsidan wala balima wa inna ma kharajtu li talab al islah fi ummati jaddi kharajtu li amura bil ma'roof wa anha an al munkar. He says, I'm not standing to take power, to cause bloodshed, to cause fighting. I'm standing to revive the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. I'm standing to enjoin the good and forbid the evil that's in society in front of us. And this is what Aba Abdullah did. Imam al-Hussein gave life to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Imam al-Hussein was the Qur'an al-Natiq on the day of Karbala. He was the speaking Qur'an resembled the Qur'an and resembled Rasulullah in all of his actions. So his revolt, his stance, the first reason that made it successful was that it was purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a lesson in life. If I do anything purely for Allah, it will grow, it will find success. If I do it for this life or for fame or for publicity, then no, it will just have its own short life. This was the first reason. And the second reason, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, his stance, his revolt, was a revolt for the sake of humanity. 
was a revolt for the sake of reviving the people. And this is the mission of Islam. And this is the mission of the Quran. This is the mission of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi to awaken the minds, to free people from the captivity of slavery. Yes, we might not be slaves. We might not be literal slaves, but we can be slaves while we are free. And there were many people that were slaves while they were free men. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he liberated them. Through his movement, through his revolution, Aba Abdullah managed to free people from the burdens of ignorance. Imam al Baqir alayhi salam, in the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, he says, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّهُ بَدَلَ مُحْجَتَهُ فِيكَ I bear witness that Aba Abdullah gave the blood of his heart. بَدَلَ مُحْجَتَهُ فِيكَ For what? What does anyone, why does anyone go and give up their life? لِيَسْتَنْقِذَ عِبَادَكَ مِنَ الْجَهَالَةِ وَحَيْرَةِ الظَّلَالَةِ وَقَدْ تَوَازَرَ عَلَيْهِ مَنْ غَرَّتْهُ الدُّنْيَا He says, the mission of Aba Abdullah was a humanitarian mission. It was a mission to liberate people from the chains of ignorance. And we see that this is the first thing that the religion of Islam fought against. It fought against ignorance. The first verse that came down, down upon Rasulullah was Iqra, go read. Rasulullah would constantly tell people to educate themselves. And this is what Aba Abdullah did today. After hearing the story of Imam al Hussein, can anyone still say, I don't know where the haq is? I don't know where right is and wrong? Maybe before people used to say we were confused, we don't know who's the rightful leader. But when you see a man like Hussein, and on the other side, a man who butchers the grandson of Rasulullah and stomps on the chest of Aba Abdullah and beheads the six month old son of Aba Abdullah. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize haq is where and batil is where. Imam al Hussein, he deciphered. Imam al Hussein, he made people know where righteousness is and where falsehood is. He awoken the people, he woke people up, he liberated people from the chains of ignorance. And this is the mission of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa al Hassan. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, Rasulullah says about him, Hussein on minni wa ana min Hussein. Rasulullah and Imam al Hussein, they are from one another. They are the same flesh, they are the same blood. The mission of Imam al Hussein was the same mission of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We see that the mission of Islam, in fact, it's a mission to liberate people. The religion of Islam, it has a position against poverty. The religion of Islam is against war. The religion of Islam is against racism. The religion of Islam is against bigotry. The religion of Islam calls for people to be educated. The religion of Islam calls for people to have rights, women, men, anyone in society, even animals. You see, Rasulullah, Imam al Hussein, the Quran, and the religion of Islam, they all have one mission, and that is a humanitarian mission to care for people. Today, we see in the most advanced civilizations, civilizations and countries that are proud to be democratic countries. How many people die? in those countries every year because someone feels like walking up somewhere and shooting up a bunch of students? How many people are in prisons? How many people are in the slavery of ignorance? How many people are suffering from personal issues? How many people are dying out of hunger? We see the religion of Islam, it brings a humanitarian solution to all of these problems. And this is why we have to look at Rasulullah. We have to look at Aba Abdullah and Hussein as role models. And we need to show the world that Rasulullah and Imam Hussein are humanitarian role models for everyone. 
not just for you and I, the followers of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to reintroduce Rasulullah to the world today. We need to reintroduce the Ahlul Bayt to the world today because the religion of Islam that the people know today is not the true Islam of Imam al Hussein. They know the Islam of Yazid and Muawiyah. They don't know the Islam of Hussein. Therefore, it is our obligation, it is our duty to introduce, reintroduce Imam al Hussein to the world. And this is why we commemorate Aba Abdullah. This is why we commemorate Imam al Hussein so that we can show the world that there was a haq and there was a batil. And the oppression that the world sees today in the name of the religion of Islam is the same oppression that butchered the grandson of Rasulullah. The Islam that people see today is not the Islam of Rasulullah. It's not the Islam of the Ahlul Bayt. It's not the Quran. The Quran speaks of human rights. The Quran is a book that was sent for all of humanity, Muslim or non-Muslim. Islam calls for the respect of the human being. Allah says in the Quran, If you're a living human being, you should not go hungry. You should have a roof over your head. You should not go thirsty. You should have clothes to cover yourself, to protect yourself. This is what the Qur'an calls for. Do other societies that attack the religion of Islam, do they offer this respect to the human being the way the religion of Islam does? These basic human rights, we see that the religion of Islam offers these rights. It is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi who cannot sleep in the middle of the night. Why? Because there's other people suffering. And he tells the people, whoever sleeps when his neighbor is hungry, then this person is not from my ummah. This is Islam. This is the beauty of the Quran. This is the humanitarian side of the Ahlul Bayt and the Quran. And we see Imam Al Hussein, he follows in the footsteps of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We see Imam al Hussein, he also follows the same path of his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. A mission to revive the ummah. A mission to guide people towards Allah on one hand. And on the other hand, to bring the awareness, to give rights to the human being. To respect the human being. Yazid, Muawiyah and Bani Umayyah, they were enslaving people. They were enslaving people. And until today, the way of Yazid, the way of Muawiyah and the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt, it continues to enslave people. It doesn't give people the opportunity to use their intellect. Some hadith, they say that anyone who comes and says, I'm a Khalifa, you have to follow this person. Is this a right hadith? Is this what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us intellect? Is this the way Allah wants us to be? Anyone who comes and says, I'm a leader, you go and you follow this person? Even if this person is a man like Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi? Anyone who comes and says, I'm the caliph of Rasulullah? No. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he taught people that not anyone who says, I'm a khalifa, is worthy of sitting on, the, on that member of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Not anyone who claims to be a leader is going to be a leader. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he deciphered the haq from the batil and he shows people how to stand for humanity. How to respect the human life. How to cherish the human being, no matter who it is, no matter what kind of a person it is. Today, in the most advanced societies, we see there are major problems. Yet we see that religions are attacked. <coughs> we see the religion of Islam is attacked. For the ones that attack the religion of Islam, have they solved the issue of poverty? Have they solved the issue of people suffering because of malnutrition? 
There are three billion people on earth that live off of two dollars and fifty cents each day. That means the whole year, all they have is nine hundred dollars. Isn't this poverty? Why? Because one group of people, they want to take all of the money. They want to take 99% of the money. And that allows suffering. We see that this is taking place in the most advanced of societies. And the most advanced societies are allowing this to take place. Whereas we go to the Quran, we go to the religion of Islam, we see that the Quran gives us a system. The Qur'an gives us role models that teach us how to eradicate poverty from society. Who are those role models? Those role models are the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as-salam. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا the Ahmed Bayt, they didn't ask for a tax return. They didn't ask for someone to say thank you. And this is how you eradicate poverty. This is how you deal with the problems in your society. This is how you deal with the issue of poverty. They gave away their food. They slept hungry. They said, it's okay, I sleep hungry one night, two nights, three nights. But someone does not have that food. I give that person that food. And this is what they did. This is how they became role models. This is how they became humanitarian role models. And the Quran teaches us how to deal with the issue of poverty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, today the whole world is trying to deal with the issue of global warming. Global warming. How are you going to deal with that issue? <clears throat> there are some countries that refuse to acknowledge it and there are some countries that want to change it because every day there is rains, there's hurricanes, there's earthquakes, there's events that are destroying their land and their lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a simple solution. وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Allah says eat. Eat as much as you want. Drink as much as you want. Have clothes. Do whatever you want. But do not waste. The day we stop wasting food, the day we stop buying things that we don't need, we will take a step towards stopping poverty. We will help other people out. Instead of buying a hundred shoes, 50 pairs of shoes in my closet, I can buy... Five, what's going to happen? And the rest, I can spend it on helping other people. This is what Allah says. Kulu washrabu wa la tusrifu. In another verse, Allah says, Inna al-mubaddirina ka'anu ikhwana shayateen. The ones that waste, they are the brothers of the shayateen. They are the brothers of the satans. You see, this is a very simple solution from a book that thinks and cares for humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants everyone to be living a good life. Not only 1% of the people. Allah wants everyone to live happy. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought down a system, brought down messengers and prophets that teach us how to live that lifestyle. Caring for people, thinking about people, and we see Rasulullah, he was the first role model when it came to caring for other people. And Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. A few days before Ashura, Imam al Hussein, he had water with him. Imam al Hussein had a lot of water with him. It was before Ashura. Then the army of Al Hur, they intercepted Imam al Hussein. And the army was thirsty. They did not have water. What did Imam al Hussein do? Imam al Hussein he gave Al Hur and over a thousand men with him water so that they drink and water for their horses to drink until they were all quenched. This was Imam al Hussein And then a few days later, they blocked the water from Abu Abdullah. But the difference is. 
Imam al Hussein is still victorious because Imam al Hussein is remembered and the others they are forgotten. The generosity of the Ahlul Bayt, even in the most difficult times, you see, Imam al Hussein was generous. Imam al Hussein was giving. This is one example of the humanity that we need to have the world follow Rasulullah and the Ahlul Bayt for. As humanitarian leaders, Another example is when it comes to racism and bigotry and prejudice. Today, here in the most advanced country in the world, in the United States of America, how much racism do we experience? How much racism exists? How many groups of minorities do not feel that they are involved, do not feel that they are accepted just because of their skin color or their racial background? You go and you look at the Qur'an, Allah says in the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal, in, ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu, inna akramakum, and Allahi atqakum. The best out of you. It's, it's not the best because of his or her skin color, because of his or her race. And we see the religion of Islam abolished racism. Yes, the religion of Islam through the actions of Rasulullah, through the akhlaq of Rasulullah, he managed to bring different groups of people, different colors, different races, all together. He had Suhaib al-Rumi, he had Bilal al-Habashi, he had Salman al-Farisi, and he had Abu Dhar al-Ghafari who was an Arab. Rasulullah managed to bring everyone together. He brought them all under kalimatu la ilaha illallah. He brought them all together under the Quran where Allah says, inna akramakum and Allah yatqakum. The best out of you in the eyes of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. This is the scale. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he needed to practice. Sometimes you can't just tell people do not be racist. He needs to practice. He needs to implement. How does he do that? He brings a man from Ethiopia who used to be a slave. He makes that person become the spokesperson of Islam. Who was that? It was Bilal. Bilal became the muaddin of Rasulullah, the official muaddin of Rasulullah. Some of the Arabs, they didn't like that. They said, they saw Bilal standing on the Kaaba. They said, I wish I had died and I had not seen this crow yelling on the Kaaba. But then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he insisted that Bilal performs the Adhan. And this is how Rasulullah abolished racism. Of course, there are still people that continue to have racism and prejudice in their hearts. But the actions of Rasulullah and the Quran are against that. And we see Imam al Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura, there was another freed slave, Joan, Mawla Abu Dhar. This man, Joan, Imam al Hussein first told him, You do not need to fight with us. But Joan insisted that he wants to mix his blood with the blood of Abba Abdullah. On the day of Ashura, you know what Imam al Hussein did to Joan? He did not do to any of his companions. When Joan fell on the ground, Imam al Hussein he went and he placed his cheek on the cheek of Joan on the ground of Karbala, in the barrel of Karbala. Imam Zayd al Abidin says, after the event of Ashura, we would smell a very beautiful scent coming from the body of Joan because of the du'a of Imam al Hussein for this man. Imam al Hussein, he placed his cheek on one other person. You know who that was? It was Ali al Akbar. So you see, Imam al Hussein, he treats a man who is different color from a different nation. He treats him the same way he treats his own son, Ali al Akbar. This is how Abba Abdullah became a role model in the most difficult times while the arrows were being thrown at him. 
In that time, he was becoming a role model. This was one. A third, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and the Ahl al Bayt, they teach us to be humanitarian by standing and having a stance against war and against bloodshed and against fighting. Despite all of the accusations against the religion of Islam, my dear brothers and sisters, go and study the life of Rasulullah. Go and study the life of the Ahlul Bayt. Go and educate yourself about the Quran because this is the only way we will be able to repel the misconceptions about our own prophets and our Quran and our religion. You see that the religion of Islam was completely against violence. The religion of Islam was against bloodshed. And all of the wars of Rasulullah, they were defensive battles. Fighting when an, an army is attacking them. But today you go and you look at the most advanced societies. What makes them advanced societies? Because they have ballistic missiles that are able to bomb a place 3,000 miles away. Because they have bombs that are able to wipe out cities. This is what makes them advanced. This is what makes them progress, progressive countries. Whereas we look at the Quran, we look at the religion of Islam, it stands against violence, always seeking the route of diplomacy, trying to avoid fighting. Whereas we see in this country, there are more weapons, there are more firearms than there are people. There's over 300 million, 350 million firearms in this country. More than the population of this country. Now, who is violent? The religion of Islam, the religion of Islam always stood against violence. And we see Rasulullah even before the war, before the battle, Rasulullah would instruct the Muslims you do not kill the older people. You do not kill the children. You leave the women. You do not, you do not destroy the crops. Anyone who turns around and refuses to fight, you leave them. You even, if you study the life of Amir al-Mu'mineen, you see that Amir al-Mu'mineen, he would go into battle. He would join the battle after noon. Why? Because once the sun is going to set, people are running away. People are not going to fight anymore. He would join the battle in a time where he knows people would leave so that he would spare them their lives. And you see Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he also took on that role. He also took on that humanitarian role on the day of Ashura, in the morning of Ashura, before the battle started, or the night before Ashura, Shimr ibn Dirjoshan and a few of the thugs that were going to kill Imam al Hussein, they came by the tent of Imam al Hussein. One of the companions of Imam al Hussein, he had an arrow. He tells Imam al Hussein, let me shoot this man right now because he is going to fight us tomorrow. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he said the same words that his father said. And he said the same words that his grandfather Rasulullah said. And that was, Inni akrah an abda'ahum biqital. I do not want to be the one who starts the bloodshed. I do not want to be the one who starts the fighting. And then on the day of Ashura, after Imam al Hussein saw that the arrows were raining on his camp, he tells his companions, Qumu ila al mawt al la budda min. These are the arrows, these are the messengers of death that are coming to us. We will not begin by fighting. Once they begin, then we will defend ourselves. This is the humanitarian aspect of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. This is what the Ahlul Bayt teach us. Another virtue, something that societies do not have today, is the ability to forgive, the ability to love, to show compassion, when we look at the Ahl al-Bayt, when we look at Rasulullah, we see that it was Rasulullah who loved. It was Rasulullah who showed compassion. It was Rasulullah who cared for people. 
Rasulullah was a humanitarian prophet. The Ahl al-Bayt, Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, on the day of Ashura, when he saw that the people were in thousands, Imam al-Hussein, he started to cry. You know why he started to cry? Not because he was worried he was going to die. Imam al-Hussein knew exactly what he was going to do. Imam al-Hussein knew that he was going to face death and martyrdom. Because even before leaving that journey, he tells the people, he stood by the Kaaba and he said, خُطَّ الْمَوْتُ عَلَىٰ وِلْدِ آدَمْ مَخَطَّ الْقِلَادَةِ عَلَىٰ جِيدِ الْفَتَاتِ وَمَا أَوْلَهَنِي إِلَىٰ أَسْلَافِي إِشْتِيَاقَ يَعْقُوبَ إِلَىٰ يُوسُفِ وَخُيِّرَ لِي مَسْرَعٌ أَنَا لَاقِيهِ كَأَنِّي بِأَوْصَالِي تُقَطِّعُهَا عُسْلَانُ الْفَلَوَاتِ بَيْنَ النَّوَاوِيسِ وَكَرْبَلَا Imam al-Hussein, he even gave the location. He even knew where he was going to die. And he said, what will happen to him? He knew he was going to die. But he cried when he saw those men. He cried. They asked him, why are you crying? He says, I cry because these men are going to go to the hellfire because they are fighting the son of the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he's a humanitarian Imam, just like Rasulullah is a humanitarian prophet, and this is what made Imam al Hussein successful. This is what made this is the secret towards the victory of Imam al Hussein, because first it was for the sake of Allah, purely for the sake of Allah, and second. He was an imam that cared for the people. He liberated the people. And this is why we must introduce Imam al Hussein to the world. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, when we are coming to the majalis of Imam al Hussein, let us come to this majalis in a state of purity, in a state of wudu, where we are going to learn about the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, where we are going to shed a few tears for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Because shedding tears for Imam al Hussein, it's the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. We are not just crying for Imam al Hussein because we are emotional. No, 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 no. This is the last thing that we are. We are emotional, but we cry. Because Rasulullah cried for Imam al Hussein. Numerous traditions from the Sunni and the Shia traditions, they tell us that Rasulullah cried for Aba Abdullah. Many narrations, they mention this. One day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he sees Imam al Hussein walking, he runs after him. He is the prophet, he is the leader, he runs after him. Then he holds him and he begins to kiss him. Then suddenly the companions, they see Rasulullah crying. Usually when a grandfather is holding his grandson, they do not start crying. Why is Rasulullah crying? Rasulullah, he tells the Muslims what will happen to, to Imam al Hussein. It is not only humans that cried for Imam al Hussein. Today, and I read this today, historians from the Sunni side and the Shia side, they say that the cries, the skies, they cried for Aba Abdullah al Hussein. And the hadith says that the skies did not cry for anyone other than Yahya, John the Baptist, and Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Amir al Mu'mineen. on one of his journeys, one of his expeditions, he passed by Karbala, and he began to cry. So they tell him, why are you crying? He says, from this land, there will be a group of people that will be killed and they will go immediately to heaven. And the, sky, the skies will cry for them. And then he recited this verse, فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهُمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا كَانُوا مُنْظَرِينَ The kuffar, the skies do not cry for them. وَلَكِنْ بَكَتْ عَلَىٰ أَبُوْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ الْحُسَيْنِ However, they cry for Aba Abdullah. This is why we see the Imams of Ahl al-Bayt 
they insisted on crying for Imam al Hussein. Because when there is an emotion, emotional aspect attached to something that is te going to teach you principles in life, you will remember it every year. And this is why we remember Imam al Hussein. Imam al Rada alayhi salam, he tells one of his companions, Al Rayyan ibn Shabib, he tells him, Oh Rayyan, in al Muharram, هو الشهر الذي كان أهل الجاهلية فيما مضى يحرمون فيه الظلم والقتال أو ريان The pagans before Islam they gave sanctity to the month of Muharram Why is it called Muharram? Muharram means that fighting is haram in the month of Muharram Bloodshed is haram in the month of Muharram and this was before the religion of Islam and then he says, however, this ummah, they did not respect the month of Muharram. And they did not respect the grandson of Rasulullah and Rasulullah himself. And then he says, Yabna Shabib, in kunta baqiyan li shay, fabki li jaddi al Hussein, faqad dhubiha kama yudbah al kabsh. Oh, son of Shabib, if you have something to cry about, if you lost a family member, a loved one died in your life, cry for my grandfather, Hussein, because he was butchered just like a sheep is butchered. The Imams of Ahl al-Bayt, they insisted on their followers to remember Imam al-Hussein, to cry for Imam al-Hussein, alayhi salam. Imam Zain al Abidin, he used to, every time they bring food in front of him, every time they bring water for him to drink, he would begin to cry. His companions, many years after Ashura, they would tell him, O oh, son of Rasulullah, when will your crying stop? When will you stop crying for your father, Aba Abdullah? Imam Zain al Abidin, he says, Yaqub the Prophet. He lost his son Yusuf. He cried so much for Yusuf and he knew that Yusuf was alive. He knew Yusuf was alive. He's a prophet of Allah. He cried until his eyes went blind. Allah says, How do you expect me not to cry when I saw my father and 18 members from the household of Rasulullah butchered one after the other? We see that the Imam, Imam al Rada alayhi salam, Imam al Sadiq, they would gather companions that would cry for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. One of the companions of Imam al Sadiq by the name of Al Sayyid al Himyari, this man, he, Imam al Sadiq, he gathered and he, he wanted to hold a majlis just like the way we are sitting today. The Imam would say, Allahumma arham tilka sarkhat allati kanat lana. Allahumma arham tilka al-wujuh allati taqallabat ala qabri abi abdullah. He would do dua for the ones that cry for Imam al-Husayn, for the ones that walk towards the grave of Imam al-Husayn. And then he would hold the majlis, he would tell people to cry. So he tells a Sayyid al-Himyari, to recite poems for Imam al Hussein. So, as Sayyid al Hamyari, he begins reciting Umrur ala Jatath al Hussein. As soon as the Imam he heard the name of his grandfather, Aba Abdullah, he tells him, Oh, as Sayyid al Hamyari, I want you to recite just like the way you recite in Iraq over the grave of Aba Abdullah. With a sad tone, so people cry. So as Sayyid al Hamyari, he began to recite Umr ala Jadat al Hussein. وَقُلْ لِأَعْظُمِهِ الزَّكِيَّةِ يَا أَعْظُمِ اللَّهِ زِلْتِ مِنْ وَطْفَةِ سَاكِبَةً رَوِيَّةِ مَا لَذَّ عَيْشٌ بَعْدَ رَضِّكِ بِالْجِيَادِ الْأَعْوَجِيَّةِ Another poet by the name of Dعبل الخزاعي in front of Imam al-Rada 
he recites, he begins his majlis by giving condolences to the mother of the shaheed. Whenever someone dies, they go to his mother. He goes to Fatima to Zahra, alayhi salam. Fatima, if you killed Hussain, Mujaddalayan, and died in a shot of Furati. إذا يا يا لا لطمت الخد فاطم عنده وأجريت دمع العين من وجناتي أفاطم قومي يا ابنة الخير والدبي نجوم سماوات بأرض فلاتي لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون Let us raise our hands in dua These nights are the nights of Aba Abdullah and Hussein The dua under the dome of Aba Abdullah is accepted We are not near the dome of Aba Abdullah but our hearts are with Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Let us raise our hands in dua. Nas'aluka Allahumma wa nadu'uk bismik al-Azim al-A'zam al-A'az al-Ajal al-Akram ya Allah ya Allah ya Rahman ya Rahim ya Muqallib al-Qulub thabbit qulubana ala deenik اللهم اخبر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير Let us also recite this verse five times for the sick بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء اللهم شافي كل مريض اللهم ارزقنا زيارة الحسين في الدنيا وفي الآخرة اللهم ارزقنا شفاعة الحسين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد